Let's review the core concepts around creating Mongo engine entities. We started out by creating what I called basic classes. These are classes that could just as easily have been mapped to a relational database because they just have flat fields or columns if you want to think of them that way. And none of the nested or particular capabilities of document databases. So the one that matched that was the snake. And the snake, we make sure that it derives from mongoengine.document. And then we specify the fields by passing along or creating these Mongo engine descriptors. So we said there's a registered date, and that's a Mongo engine dot date time field. The length, that was a float. That was the length of the snake in meters. The name of the snake is a string, species is a name as a string as well, and whether or not it's venomous, that's a Boolean, true or false. So you can see we can map out the types for this basic snake class really easily here. Of course, our snake should have default values, constraints like required fields, and things like that. So here we've taken that same snake class and we've added a default value for the register date. We said just call the function datetime.datetime.now anytime you insert a new snake. So it's going to automatically tag that new entity or that new document with the date in which it was inserted. Now remember, be super careful to not call the function now, but pass the function now. Okay. We also set the length to a float. We said that's a required float. You have to specify the length or it'll you know, Mongo Engine will give you an error, so you can't insert this thing. That field is required. It's interesting that that's not a feature of MongoDB. That's a feature of Mongo Engine. So by using Mongo Engine instead of, say, PyMongo, we get these additional features. Same for the default. And name, species, and venomous, also these are all required. So we can do this here. Now, again, this is still one of these sort of basic classes with just our constraints and defaults. Let's look at the cage. The cage is more, uh, takes better advantage of the document database. So we have the name, the price, the square meters, required standard stuff there. But we also have the bookings. These are either the times in which a cage could be booked or an active booking where a snake has registered to be there on a certain time. And we model that through the booking class. And we said this cage is going to embed the bookings into it. So to do that, we use the Mongo engine embedded document list field. So a list of embedded documents and the argument we pass is the type of embedded document. So it's a booking that we're putting into this list. All right, now, how does this look if we populate this cage and we add a couple of bookings and we call save? Well, it looks like this. It has the standard fields, right? Like a auto-generated underscore ID, the date that was registered. This is set as the default value in the full class. We have the name, the price, the square meters, and so on. So that's all standard stuff. And we've seen that before. But the bookings part, check that out. So we have bookings, and it's a list, right? Square brackets, uh, technically an array in JavaScript, right? And the items in this list are those bookings. So we have a check-in date, check-out date, and the ratings. So we have added two bookings in here. Now, we didn't fill out the, they're not booked, so we don't have a guest snake and an owner ID, and they haven't already taken them so they haven't rated it or given it a review so some of the pieces are not saved into the database to save space nonetheless here we have our embedded bookings inside of our document and we did that through the embedded document list field